Hello, welcome back to the Sockwish Pup um, build. We've moved on to the painting and I promised I'll try and show you how I put my roundels on. Um, as you can see in this picture here, because the round is going to fall over the aileron, we need to make sure the aileron's in position and nice and securely level. So I do that by putting a piece of ply on the bottom, a piece of ply on the top, and a couple of clamps there, just hold everything in position. This here, I don't know if you can see too well from the distance I've got this camera set up, but this is actually a pin and this has been mounted in the central location of where the round was going to go. Um, again, depending on what type of model you're going to go, it depends where the round will go. So I'll, I've actually lined this up for this particular model. Obviously if you're doing it on a different model, you'll know where the pin needs to go. So that's all you need to do. Basically what I do is I've got a piece of card with a drawing pin um, sitting on top of it and then a bit of brown um, tape just to hold everything in place. Um, the idea of the card is just to protect the undercovering from the, the drawing pin metal base because we don't want to scratch anything. Okay, so now what we're going to do is if I just bring one of these into view, this is one of our templates ready for spray. Now with this template it's going to sit something along those lines on top of there. But before we do that, what we need to do is turn it over. This has got a very nice um, backing on it. We'll peel this backing off and that will just reveal the template. What we need to do is we need to cut a line running down that template, roughly halfway, and then carefully lay it back on, leaving about 5 mil gap um, either, side, either side of the centre mark and then that we can then start laying this out onto the, the wing and then start peeling off and revealing the template. So what I'll do now is I'll go away and I'll cut, take this off and cut um, our backing and then place it back on and then show you what we've got. Right, as you can see I've peeled the backing off so that's the actual marks, the darker piece and then the top piece is just the um, transfer tape or paper as we like to call it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, as I've said, I'm just going to roughly get the centre of this backing paper with a sharp knife, just run along like that, and then that gives us our two separate sides. Okay. Now what we need to do is carefully, if we, I'll just show you, we've got this centre mark there which is going to help us line up to make sure we get everything square. So what we'll do is I'll just lay this paper carefully back on. Remember to use the shiny side because if you don't we'll get it in the right mess. And then I'll put this just like this over there like so. And then smooth it down. Slide this one over slightly and then repeat the procedure on this side here. And as you can see, from there, that's the result we're looking for. Okay, so the next thing is, is if I can bring this closer to you, you'll see here there's a small hole through there which has been made, made with a pin and that needs to line up over the top of our pin. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to carefully place this on top of the wing, locate the hole, which is done there, and then gently push through. And then you should see now, if I can pan in, that that is sitting through the pin, pin hole. The next thing to do now is if I pan back out, is we need to just go along this edge here, revealing the mask at 
the moment. We won't worry too much about this. Um, I'll just, what I'll do here is I'll just take that off there. We'll firm that down. And then just for the minute, what we'll do is we'll reclamp this together. Stuck. And then the idea now is that we'll put one side back and then gradually push it down. It might mean I just have to take these off again in a minute. So I'm just going to turn off for a minute and then sort these out so I'm comfortable and then we can progress with that. Right, I've made a couple of readjustments on the plants. So now what we need to do, having stuck this down here like so, we need to peel this half back. And then allow this sticky tape to come down, come off, and that gives us our mask. And then gradually what we need to do is on both sides, just gradually work the mask into position. We won't worry about the clamps at the minute, we can look at that in a minute. So again, it's just firming it down, so it's in situ. And then likewise, lift the other side up. And then pull that back. Move that to one side. And then again, carefully work it from both sides. stages because the transfer paper is light tack but also the the actual film the, the mask is a light tack um, product so what I tend to do is just come in through here because we know we've got our piece of um, cardboard underneath and then gradually peel Peel off the mask, tack. If you do it in stages as well, it's, um, it's better. Okay, now I'm working from the outside. Try from the inside out. We just take it in stages and carefully. And that ensures our mask stays in situ. some rib tapes here, here, and here, and a few around there. 
you'll find that this stuff is quite forgiving. As long as you're doing it in a warm environment and you just concentrate on those areas and push down to make sure that everything's sealed. And you shouldn't have any problems with any bleed from this area here where one of my little servo hatches is going so I just want to make sure I've got that nice and firm and it's just a matter of going around and sealing it. This outside edge that sticks down pretty well so um, again it just overlaps the edge there through there and that should give us a nice circle. We've noticed I've put the um, wood over this now um, and clamped it all back in and that's basically what we have there. The next process to do now is to mask up the remaining areas of the wing that we don't want to get the spray on. Um, I mean I probably use a bit of this and I've got some brown paper here as well which I'll do. You just need to remember that this here, because this is our central pin, we're going to use that when we put on our white mask. So that needs to stay in place. So don't get carried away and take this off. This needs to stay in place for um, with the process of when we put the the white mask um, down ready for when we spray the white. So that's it so far. I'll go away and mask it up. I think you've seen masking up on some of my previous videos, but I'll do that now and then just come back and show you it ready for for, for painting. I don't know if I can lift this up a little bit for you to give you a better idea of what we've got. Okay, thanks for watching. Right, we're all masked now, so that's this side ready for spraying. Just put it up like that so you can see. Next thing to do is I've got to do the other side, so I've shown you this side, I won't show you the other side. Um, I'll get that prepared and then we are ready to start looking at getting some colour onto here. Okay, thanks for watching. Right, welcome back. Uh, transferred myself down to my shed now. We're going to start spraying up this uh, portion of the roundel. Uh, the first thing I do is I put a coat of clear. Um, as you can see that it doesn't look very clear, but it is. It comes out clear. Um, again, it's about 50... 50 mix this one. I normally use um, 30, 70, but for this I want to go in quite light. Now the, the purpose of this is we're just going to spray around this edge here and all that's going to do is that's going to seal off um, the mask for us. So when we spray the blue, hopefully we don't get no um, underspray going underneath the mask. If there are a few little areas that are lifted up, this should hopefully seal it all in. Um, this is actually a matte finish as per the rest of the model so once it's on uh, you won't be able to see it so what I'll do is I'll get on and start doing that. Um, I've obviously got the two roundels to do, obviously my shed's not big enough for you to see both of them done so I'll do this one here and I've got one down the other end and I'll do that. Okay so here it goes. First of all we just need to Set our spray, that's pretty good, and then it's just a case of working around the other round or just turn your you off for a minute and then I'll come back. Okay we're back again that's coat's dried now so it's just again the same procedure go around with the airbrush and let's put another coat on. Okay. I'll do this probably about three times so this is the second one
Okay, so that's got to dry. And I'll be back in a minute. Okay, last coat now, and then we should be ready to lay some of the, the blue on. that go off and then we can start spraying the blue. Right, back again. That's all nicely dried now. The next thing really I do before I go any further is I just check around all the edge just to make sure nothing has lifted up. Because sometimes the pressure of the um, airbrush can lift but it seems all to be fairly okay. So now we can commence with putting on some of the, the blue. Again the blue I mix up about 70-30 so that's 70 paint, 30 thinners and we'll probably have to do a few coats at this so here goes just get my make sure i'm happy with the spray pattern okay and again we really want to work in it doesn't matter about carrying it all in here because we want to keep the depth of color as we put other colors on top of this and if you have a light color um, towards the middle um, when you put your white on the, the wires will pick up the, the contrast between the blue and the actual text so it's better if we can get it all pretty coated but just bearing in mind we don't want to go too heavy in this area here okay so here goes the first one so I'll just turn off for a minute and then we'll have a go put some more on in. As you can see I've done another coat but um, so you won't want to see them all but um, we're going to put another one on now okay. be done. Um, obviously I've done both roundels and then what we'll do is we'll let that dry off and then we'll peel it off and then we'll see what the results like. I'm hoping it's pretty good. Um, again you never really know until you've got the, the masks off. Okay so I'll, I'm just in the process of mixing some more paint up um, and once I've done that and we're ready I'll show the final spraying. Um, it might just be worth noting as well, some of these paints as well, um, you can get little bits of particles in them, so I always filter mine through a bit of um, cloth just to get any um, big part particles of the paint out um, so it goes through the airbrush a bit cleaner. Okay, right, all dry now. Well, dry to the touch and dry enough to get the um, masks off. So here goes, I'm going to try taking this off and hopefully um, we'll have a nice result.
Right, the moment of truth. Okay, so there you see we have it. It's, um, it's pretty good. There's a. Just pop this back on here for a minute. Um, I'll be honest with you, there's a very slight little bit there of overspray, but we can get that later on. But apart from that, I'm pretty comfortable with what we've, what we've achieved. Okay, so that's putting that round on. The next, uh, the next thing was we will go through the same process again with the mask for the white. That will be laid on top in the same manner and then we will spray that up. Um, again I will video that for you. And then it is just a case of after the white is on doing exactly the same thing again with the red. And then that is our um, A type brown all applied to the bottom wings. Okay thanks for watching anyway.